G'day, how you going? In today's video, I wanna talk histograms. So I wanna show you how to correctly read a histogram and, uh, and then how to use and apply that knowledge when you're shooting in the field to obtain perfect exposure every single time. Now also hang around to the end because I wanna talk about two things that I'm sure you've heard and been told about histograms that are absolute nonsense. So hang around till then. Right, let's get started. Let's learn all about how to read a histogram correctly. Now, firstly, there's two types of histograms. We have a what's called a luminosity histogram, which is a, a, a white graph. And then you may have also seen another one where we have the red, green, and blue channels, the RGB histograms. So we're not gonna delve in to the RGB channels on this um, video. I'm just purely gonna talk about the luminosity histogram, which is the white one. And I'd probably suggest if you're learning, if you can get into your menu system on your camera, if you can turn the RGB one off, then turn it off so as it's not a distraction. If you haven't got a histogram up um, in your, on your camera, you should, most cameras, not all, but, um, most will have a live view histogram, which gives you a, a guide of your exposure. Um, and then there'll be one when you actually review the image. So to get the live view one up, you may have to enable it in your menu system if it's not there. So you might have to jump in and have a bit of a look for that. Okay, so a histogram is purely a graph of every single tone that we have in the image. Now with, a, with the luminosity histogram, what we have to imagine is that the image has been converted to black and white, and then every pixel has been mapped as a tone. So starting on the left-hand side, we have a pure black, which is zero, and then on the right-hand side, we have a pure white, which is 256. So it breaks it into 256 different tones, and then we'll, we'll graph those pixels. So smack bang in the middle at 128 is a mid gray. So that's the left to the right of the, of the um, histogram. The height is purely the number of pixels that are at that particular tone. Okay, so don't ever be put off by the, the height of a histogram. If it goes right to the top or it's high or it's low, don't think that that is right or wrong. It's purely telling you how many pixels there are of that particular tone. Okay, we're gonna take some shots and look at the histogram and this will now sort of all make sense. So I've got a gray card here. So that's a mid gray. We have a pure white. We have a black, it's not a pure black, it's 80% black. And then we have an image that has a little bit of everything in it. So let's photograph those and we'll look at the histograms and see where they lay. Okay, I've set these cards up. Let's take some photos of those. The, the gray card, the black, the white, and then I've got a scene that has um, multiple different tones in it. Just quickly sidetrack here with the gray card, how I set this exposure up is I set my camera to spot metering. So when it's in spot metering, it'll only meter off one spot. It's normally two to 3%, and that'll be wherever you placed um, your, your little focus box that you can move around the scene. And it will meter that as if it is a mid gray. So it's a perfect way to get perfect exposure to get that exactly right, because we just meter off that and it places it smack bang in the middle. So great little tip if you're doing um, still life or product photography, get all your lighting set up and then once you're happy with what you've got, place a gray card in there, spot metering, and you can, you can um, expose off that and it will be smack bang on. Okay, so let's take a shot and we'll have a look at the histogram. Should be smack bang in the middle. So there we go. Smack bang in the middle where it should be. Let's just flip that over and we'll shoot a white scene. And of course, this is not a pure, it's not a pure white, so it won't be right over on the right hand side, but it will, won't be against the wall, but it will be on the right hand side. Okay, so again, that's white, that's where it should sit in your histogram. Let's just place a black card in there. 
And so this one, you guessed it, should sit over on the left. And there we go, way over on the left. And then when we shoot something that is um, a mixture of tones, we've got this lovely little picture here. So this has got a little bit of everything in it. So with this one, we should get a bit of everything. If we look at our histogram, so as you can see, there's a bit of everything there. Okay, so keep that in mind um, and just remember your histogram is purely a graph of um, all of the tones that are within the image. So as you can see, a histogram is purely graphing all of your tones and that's the way you need to be looking at it and, and thinking of what it is. Um, it shouldn't necessarily lay in a certain place. There's no perfect histogram for every image. Everyone's different. Everyone is going to be different. It's purely going to graph what you have in your scene. Okay, um, so let's have a look now at what you can do if you've taken an image and your histogram's not sitting where you want it to be. So with that knowledge in mind now, what happens if we have taken a shot and our histogram's not where we want it to be. So the camera basically um, hasn't got the right settings or it hasn't worked out the exposure that we want. So we're gonna want to either move it to the left if it's overexposed to darken it down a bit or we wanna move it to the right to brighten it up. So there's two different ways. Um, you're either gonna be working aperture priority or full manual. So let's go through aperture priority first. So when we're in aperture priority, um, we, we've set our ISO and we have locked in the aperture. So the camera then works out the shutter speed. And to override that, you will need to use the exposure compensation dial um, on the camera. So the different cameras, it's in different places. The Fuji's are brilliant because they actually have a, a dedicated dial on top. So when, when that's set to zero, then it's just uh, it's metering what is uh, what the camera is thinking is correct. If we need to override it, then we go plus. So plus will push our histogram to the right and brighten it up because it's giving plus is more exposure. And then if we want to underexpose and push that histogram to the left a little bit, we would go to the minus side. Um, on other cameras. Uh, and sorry, and what that will do is it will change your shutter speed. So when we go to the plus, it's going to increase the exposure, uh, the exposure time. If we go minus, it's going to shorten the exposure time. Okay, so on a Canon, uh, it is the, the back wheel here. So that one there changes our um, exposure compensation when we're in aperture priority. And you need to have this turned on to not on lock if that's on off then this back wheel doesn't work so you'll access that there and then on a nikon uh, there's generally a button on top here you'll press that in and then use i think it's the back wheel that will change it you'll see that and on other cameras you're going to have to delve in and find out where it is it may be in the menu system somewhere or you'll have a dedicated um, button on the top here Okay, that's if you're in aperture priority. If you're working in full manual, then you need to just increase your exposure or decrease it. So generally, again, with landscapes, we, we lock in the ISO to where we want it and we set the aperture to where we want it, which is normally pretty critical because that governs our depth of field. So it's generally always the shutter speed that we're gonna be changing. So if you've read your histogram and it's underexposed, then you need to change your um, shutter speed and make that longer. And then vice versa, if, if you're thinking the histogram is too far to the right and it's, it's overexposed or too bright and you wanna darken it down, then you need to shorten that, ex that exposure by changing the shutter speed. Okay, so just summing up with, um, with reading your histogram and getting your exposure exactly right or where you want it, my suggestion is, or my advice, is to look at the scene, evaluate the scene, and then work out where you think all of those tones should be laying. And it's really not that hard. If I'm shooting in the middle of the day, 
then everything's going to be sort of based in the middle because we've got a lot of light in the in the scene and there's a lot of mid-tones uh, so that's where it's going to lay so I sort of try and get my exposure sort of sitting in the middle if I'm shooting in really dark conditions like at sunrise or sunset where the light is very low and if I have a lot of the image that is very dark then I don't want it sitting in the middle because that's a mid-gray and the scene's not mid-gray I I um work on getting it sitting where it should be. So if it's on the darker side, uh, I will have it sort of further to the left of center. And then that way, when I edit the image, I also think in mind what I'm gonna do editing. If I'm gonna lighten the scene up, then I may shift it away from the dark side and, and bring it slightly more into the middle. Um, but it's basically evaluating what you have in front of you and then um, exposing it correctly to where it should be sitting. And if you do that, then you will find that once you start editing, you don't have a lot of editing to do because you're not pushing and pulling files. And when you don't, um, when you don't over edit an image and when you're not like really pulling shadows or trying to really darken down highlights, then you end up with a much nicer, crisper, cleaner file. Now, I promise you two things, there are two, two myths, two things that I'm sure you've heard about histograms that are absolute nonsense, so let me go through those two. So the first one is that the perfect histogram is a bell shape sitting right in the middle, okay? And then the second one is that we should always shoot to the right. So I think now that you have um, watched this video and you have an understanding that you will realize that both of those are totally ridiculous and nonsense. Um, a perfect histogram is not a bell shape that sits right bang in the middle. That purely just means that there are lots of midtones and there's no darks and no lights. So it's perfect for that scenario, but it's not perfect for every single image. And same again, we do not shoot to the right, okay? You shoot to the right if your scene is a lot brighter and, and light, like if you're up in the snow, you would shoot to the right. But normally you would place the tones where they are. Now I'll tell you how that came about and shooting to the right was valid uh, probably 10, 15 years ago because 10 or 15 years ago, digital cameras were nowhere near as good as they were now, or as good as they are now. We didn't have the dynamic range um, back then. We only had sort of four to five stops of dynamic range uh, and editing software is nowhere near as good as what it is now. So back in those days, what the situation was that it was very hard to recover shadow detail. If you underexposed something and then tried to pull the shadows up, it went, it was disgusting. It would go really, really noisy. You get all this noise in there and there was no way you could ever pull detail out of shadows that we do now. Back then in um, Adobe Camera Raw or, or Lightroom wasn't even invented, wasn't, uh, wasn't around back in those days. So when we edited our raw file, there was no shadow slider. We just had, um, I think it was only blacks, blacks, whites. And then a little bit later, they brought in a thing called highlight recovery, which was absolutely useless. So we had no way of, um, no, to the raw file, we had no way of pulling shadow detail. And now with that shadow slider, like that is absolutely amazing. You can pull so much detail out of the shadow area um, and you don't get all of the noise that we used to get. So that's why they used to say shoot to the right a little bit because you would then lift your shadow tones up um, so they, were, they weren't so dark and you didn't have to pull them in, um, in post. So there you go. Um, don't shoot to the right and don't expect your histogram to be a bell shape in the middle because it's probably or sometimes it's not what it's supposed to be. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment and I will get back to you and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.